So I have a few observations about that, that I've made when I travel to uh, foreign lands. One has to do with friendliness. There, there's a difference in the general level of friendliness. For the most part, Americans are not friendly. They keep to themselves. They rarely acknowledge strangers. Um, you know, they don't smile for the most part. You know, and that tends to be very different when you're traveling and when you're uh, visiting other people, at least in my observation. It's important to, to be aware of the cost of things when you're in a strange new area, um, especially when the currency is different because you don't know what is the standard, normal, customary cost for things. And so you may see something that is super cheap by American standards and not even realize that you're being grossly overcharged by local standards. Um, you know, and I, I found that that is a genuine hazard. It's something to be aware of. And sometimes you don't care. Sometimes it doesn't really matter that much. It's a, a matter of you know, a few pennies to you. Um, and in those instances, I let it go, and I, I will let them have their few extra pennies. But, um, you know, in other times, it's important to be aware. So the cost of things, and, and the, like in Egypt, the cost of things is so crazy cheap. The last two days, I've gone out for lunch and gotten you know, a, a meal, a drink, and a dessert for well under three dollars, well under. Um, you know, two days ago I had a sandwich, an espresso, and a mint lemonade and I think it was two dollars and twenty-four cents. Yesterday I found, I, I had a craving for pizza and I, so I went and I got a, a personal sized pizza. I found a stroopwafel which is common in Netherlands and um, I got a Pepsi, which I'm not really a soda drinker, but I got it because the cap was printed in Arabic and I wanted to get it for my daughter. Don't watch this, Sydney. Um, and the, so the pizza, the Stroopwafel, and the Pepsi were $2.70, I think, when, once you do the conversion. So it is important to know the cost of things, what the customary and traditional cost of things is. And that's difficult when you don't know, when you're new to an area, and also when you're dealing with currency conversions. Um, people in other parts of the world have a very different idea about personal space. And wait till you see the video on the traffic in Cairo. Um, traffic in Cairo is notorious for being scary. And I've recorded a bunch of video clips which I need to edit together. And I will post a video of what traffic in Cairo actually looks like. And because um, there's no way I could describe it and you would believe me. I mentioned in a previous video that I only speak one word of Arabic. That word is shukran, which means thank you. Um, I found that just generally being friendly and nice and knowing that one word goes an awful long way. Um, you know, the first time that I went out walking, I went on a six mile walk through random neighborhoods. I got myself deliberately lost and just wandered down whatever street looked interesting. And it was after dark and I was by myself and I did go down, you know, empty alleyways and no, I wasn't scared. It, you know, Cairo is not a terrifying place. Um, the people are very friendly, they're not dangerous, they're not threatening or menacing, and in fact, I was carrying a flashlight with me, and two separate times I found uh, guys by the side of the road that were working on their cars, and you know, trying to, to hold up their, their cell phones, you know, holding up their cell phone flashlight and trying to work on the car, and I came along with a real flashlight, and. So I, would, I stood there and you know, held the flashlight for them and gave them light so they could work on their cars. And even not being able to communicate at all 
just that went a long way toward forging a bond and a relationship with people. There's also an issue of familiarity. I mentioned that I bought a pizza yesterday and there are so many things here that are familiar and yet completely foreign. The, the pizza was not anything that Americans would recognize as pizza. I mean, it looked like a pizza. It had a, a traditional crust like a pizza. Um, there was no sauce. And um, in the Arab world, they tend to use much, they favor much stronger cheeses. So like blue cheese or Roquefort or Gorgonzola. Um, so much, much more intensely flavored cheeses. And so it, it ends up not tasting anything at all like what Americans would identify as pizza. And I found that to be true in many things. Um, I like hot tea. In fact, I was planning on going to make myself some hot tea. And one of the more popular kinds, well, a couple of popular kinds of tea here is uh, mint tea, of course, but also anise tea. So uh, the black licorice flavor which I personally like, but I know a lot of people don't, but it's popular here. Um, anise tea and um, cinnamon tea is also very popular here. So made with, with real cinnamon. Uh, so there, once you spend a significant amount of time actually living in a foreign culture, and I say significant amount of time having been here for not even two weeks yet, but um, being here not as a tourist, not living in a hotel, not eating at restaurants every day, but living in an apartment among the locals, going to the grocery store and buying the same foods that the locals buy and preparing my own foods and purposely avoiding Starbucks and McDonald's and all these other chains that I do see around, um, you, you find that tastes are different and it's interesting. I like it. I like the the differentness of the experience. If I were here for two or three or five years, there are probably things that I would definitely miss about my own home country. You know, um, tastes and conveniences and things. So um, th those are my observations about life or you know, spending significant time in a foreign land.